All right, guys, I'm back doing the night packing problem in Caddis. And we're going to start off with Python. So on an end by end chess board, two players alternate placing a knight on the board. A knight can only be placed if there are no other knights, which would either be one row in two columns or two rows in one column away from it. The first player who cannot place a knight loses. So the way that's worded, it is extremely confusing. So I went and found this problem online that actually is a real chess problem and it's much more descriptive. So if you want to, you can go look up the actual chess challenge, but basically this is a standard 8x8 chess board and a knight can only move in an L shape, two up and one across, or one over and two up, however you like. So in this challenge, um, you can prove to yourself that whoever goes first will lose. They're assuming rational players. The second player will always win. So in this game, the size of the chessboard changes. So it's always going to be a square in by in. It could be one square, two by two, three by three. The standard is eight. So if we already know the outcome, of an eight by eight board where the first player went or the, the second player wins. And then we look at the sample input and output. You can imagine if you have a one by one square, well, obviously player one wins because there's only one square to occupy. So the last player to not be able to place a knight loses, that's player two. If you have a two by two square, then player one can go, player two can also place a knight, and um, I guess depending on how you were playing, both player one and two could also fill the remaining squares, but however the rules apply, in a two by two square the second player wins because they are the last player to place a knight. So uh, no other knight can be one row and two columns away from any place knight. So let's imagine a three by three square. And if you wanna take the time to pause the video and you know, prove to yourself in a thought experiment what that would look like if player one places a knight, player two places a knight somewhere on the board until back and forth until someone can no longer place a knight. Um, meaning, if a knight can move to a space, then it's an available space for the opposing player to place a piece. If there is no available moves, then there's no available space to place a knight. So anyway, as it works out, you begin to see the pattern that for any even number square, as in 2x2 two two or 8x8, eight eight, the second player always wins. And likewise, for an even in number, so one by one or nine by nine, the first player will win. So again, um, like some of the other problems we've seen already, it ends up coming out to an even odd outcome. Which without even understanding the mechanics, you might guess just by looking at the sample input output. Okay, so how are we going to program this? Well, let's go take a look at operators. So if you scroll down to bitwise operators, you see and the ampersand symbol sets each bit to one if both bits are one. Here's some additional information from Stack Overflow. And of course you can do your own research on this bitwise operator, but Basically, it can be used of many uses um, to determine if a number is even or odd. And in a previous problem I posted not too long ago, we did this using the modulo operator. That's another way you can do it. But bitwise operators are very straightforward in that they're, you know, they're using the binary language. So let's look at some examples here. This is the actual part of the code. I'm just going to type it in here. So if a digital one in binary is zero one, 
2 is 1, 0, 3 is 1, 1. What would AND1, the bitwise operator, do to each of those? So I'm just going to open up a paint pad so I can do some... I'm just going to use this like a scratch pad. If someone has a suggestion for a better program to do this kind of thing, drop it in the comments. So let's start with 0, 1, the binary representation of digital 1. So if we want to do AND1, that means we add 1 to each bit. So the first bit place, or the 1's place, if you're speaking of containers in a base 10, 1 and 1 are the same, so that becomes 1. However, in the second place, 0 and 1 are not alike, so that one stays 0. So that means 1 and 1 equals 1, where 0 and 1 equals 0, 1. So it does not change. Um, let me figure out how to delete this. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. And I'm using my finger on the screen, that's why it looks like a two-year-old drew it. <laughs> I don't have like a stylus with an iPad or anything. Oh, I just want to delete this. Okay, there we go. Um, so now let's try the same thing with 2 to see what it does to a even number. So digital 2 comes out to 1, 0 because each container can only carry one bit. So since 1 is full, that means it moves to the next place. And 1 means we add 1 to each bit if they are already 1. So 0 and 1 are not alike, so it becomes 0. 1 and 1 are alike, so since they're both 1, stays a 1. So 1, 0, and 1 equals 1, 0. So what we're seeing is a pattern here. The number doesn't change. So when you do an AND1 operation, it's not changing the number. It's just determining was it... I mean, there's many conclusions you could come to using that operation, but one of those conclusions is, is it even or odd? All right, so three, same thing, one, one in binary plus one, one. So it stays the same once again. All right, I'm not gonna go any further. I think that's far enough for you get to get the points. And let's jump into the program again. Okay, so close out of that. All right, so if we have an even number of squares, player two wins, and if we have an odd number of squares, uh, or an odd number of n, n by n, then player one wins. So if n and one, then my conditional print first, because the first player wins. Else, the only other outcome is that it's even, so we don't need to specify that, print second, meaning the second player wins. So this code could have gotten really complicated, but um, I mean, partly the fact that it's a 1.3 point problem should be an indication that, you know, your code shouldn't be too long. All right, so just running the sample case, one prints first, so that looks good. Let's copy and paste it into Caddis. Running through 18 test cases, looks good. And now we're going to do this in C++. And we'll start out with the standard. Include iostream using namespace standard. And actually, today, um, because the thought crossed my mind, what do those actually do? And I could look it up or... I am an experiential learner, so 
why don't we just see what happens if I don't use those lines? Let's see how it breaks so I have a better intuition of what those are doing. So I need my int main return zero line. CN, I'm going to go ahead and delete using namespace standard just to show how you can use uh, an alternate way of doing this. You can just type standard with two colons after it and still use the CN or C out. And declaring my variable N as an integer type. Okay, so here's the bitwise operator in C++. It's the same exact thing. Um, I was just making sure that there's no syntax differences. So it's still going to be the uh, ampersand symbol. But in C++, now we have to put the condition inside parentheses and use brackets instead of colons. And not print, we're doing C out. And it also needs to be std colon colon C out, which I forgot because I've been in the habit of putting that first line. So I'll need to go back and add that to else. If it's even, then C out second. So I went back and added the STD to both my C outs. And as it turns out, you need include IO stream at the beginning for even that standard before the C out and CN to work. So you can get away with not having using namespace standard, but regardless, you need to include IO stream before any of your code or that uh, you won't be able to read in or print out anything basically. All right, so that one looks good. And finally, we're going to program this in Java, change the programming language, and then just looking up the syntax to make sure it's the same. It should be the same for for most or all of the bitwise operators. If you know, by no other reason than the fact that they are bitwise, like Python tends to be more language uh, intuitive, like more English. I mean, when you're actually coding, you're using words like you might use in the English language, whereas C++ and Java seem to be more like words contextual to that language or symbols. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that um, bitwise operations, it should be the same because ones and zeros are the same. Um, Okay, so here we go. Import java.util scanner public class night packing brackets public static void main parentheses string brackets args another set of brackets create my scanner class or scanner object scanner in equals new scanner system dot n Integer data type n equals n dot next int parentheses semicolon if n and n inside parentheses using the ampersand one and in one system dot out print line first so we'll print the string first if in and one. So basically saying if it's odd. I mean if you think about it there is some there is kind of an implied statement there because and one is just doing the operation but I guess what we're implying is that that the last bit meaning in the ones place 
is 1, then it's equal to 1. But it accepted that in C++, so we'll see if this works. L system dot L print line second. I'm trying to figure out why it added that X with a colon in front of my string because I did not type that, but apparently it's needed. I'm not really sure why it did that. If you know, drop it in the comments. Okay, so I'm getting a type mismatch. Can cannot convert from integer to boolean. So there's something wrong with my condition. The tip off there is that it referred to a boolean and I did not define any bool type, which is a true false. But um, by looking that up, I can see in Java, I have to make it more explicit if n and 1 equals equals 1. Because that was sort of the implication or the implied statement in C++ and Python that needs to be um, more explicitly stated here, apparently. So just learning as we go. And of course the nn1 is an actual operation, so that part is in parentheses, and then the equals equals 1 is inside another parentheses for the if conditional. So this one looks like it's running all right. And I'm a little surprised that was rated as like a 1.3 or 1.4 because that seems significantly more difficult than the other easy ones. But anyway, the next one I'll be working on is the jack-o-lantern juxtaposition. See you in the next video.